Welcome back to the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time for what the press as always. We take you through the pages of national dailies. We have Tunde Kola Willie, who's on standby. It's good to have you join us this morning, Tunde. Thanks for having me. Good morning to all of you. All right. Uh, let's quickly look at the leadership newspapers. Always attention would be on the top stories on the paper this morning. The banner caption says, Senate ignores court ruling and begins amendment of new electoral act. Uh, the several right is underneath it. Let's see if we can go through them. Says, judiciary must respect principle of separation of powers. Direct INEC to register inmates to vote in 2023. Constitute Committee on Sexual Harassment Bill and Reps Pass 56 Constitution Amendment Bill Reconsider Rejected Gender Bill uh, Bills. That's what you find underneath the caption. APC Crisis Drama as Akpan Udo Deges storms out of the committee meeting. We have some quotes saying he's tendered his resignation. Court verdict PDP names replacement for Mai and his deputy. Bernus student whose throat was slit undergoes 2.5 million surgery. And Ukraine war, Nigerian student gets Romanian study offers. Uh, that's very interesting. Business groans as diesel price hit 650 naira at depot. And terrorist kills cause of vigilantes in Kebi state. PMB applauds contribution of women to national development, just as uh, yesterday was International Women's Day. And that's it on the leadership. Let's turn attention now to the headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper. The leading one there. APC's soft landing for Buni as Sunny Bello consolidates. APC's soft landing for Buni as Sunny Bello consolidates. Consolidates with the riders, Yobe Governor Akpanadore eased out, and Senate caucus decries uncertainty. More from the front page of the nation: International Women's Day, protests over rejected gender bills, governors' wives to join push for action, House to reconsider no votes. A delicate Baba Amy claim or show PDP governorship ticket. Details on page 27. Electoral Act Amendment. Court can't stop us, says Senate. Electoral Act Amendment. Court can't stop us, says Senate. And uh, Nisero, or Nisero uh, boosts agric value chain with 146 billion naira. That's the Nigerian uh, investment based risk assessment system uh, for agricultural lending. Let's look at other ones. Uh, judgment sucking Umahi throws Eboi into confusion. Judge asks CJ to swear in PDP men. I'm still in charge. Will appeal. Purchased verdict, says ex governor. I almost called him ex governor. I'm still in charge. Will appeal. Purchased verdict, says governor. Of course, we'll look at that more in depthly uh, on the first segment of our discussions this morning. BRT murder. Family challenges police claim on body. And finally, Catholic priest abducted. These are the headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. All right, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper and find out what the Punch got to say today. And uh, the banner caption says, Man warns of hyperinflation. We're talking about Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Warns of the hyperinflation. Subsidy hits 400 naira. As diesel 625 a naira. These uh, the banner caption underneath aviation fuel hits 580 naira per liter. Air travelers stranded to pay more. We rely on diesel. The rise in price means higher cost of production. That is what the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is quoted to say. Away from that, CBN increases the currency in circulation by 418 billion naira over cash transactions. And some people are saying that this is not a way to make money in circulation. I mean, the fact that you print more money would cost inflation. Uh, APC to release zoning formula, suspend zonal Congress and meet confusion. PDP submits Umayi's replacement to INEC and sacked governor's seats tight, of course. Uh, you also find court sacks 15 lawmakers says my legislatures cannot transfer PDP votes. 
I remain governor and uh, Echo's judgment meant to embarrass APC. Uh, this is what the Umayi federal government, I mean, Umayi and fed the federal government is quoted to say. And just before we move away from the punch this morning, Song Wo Liu slams critics, BRT suspends operations, family demands justice. Oh, Shu PDP, you have uh, governor primaries produced at Deleke. Of course, that's a dancing senator. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can't wait to see him dance again. <laughs> anyway, um, let's uh, berth uh, for the final paper this morning. The Daily Trust, uh, they say they're the new super weekend trust. The lead story on the front page, how bandits ambushed, killed 63 vigilante in Kevi. Really unfortunate. How bandits ambushed, killed 63 vigilante in Kebi. Informants leaked plan to repel bandits' attack and Buhari urges proactive action. Court sack, a boy governor kicks as PDP nominates replacements. Court sack, a boy governor kicks as PDP nominates replacements. Airlines groan as aviation fuel exceeds 600 naira per liter. Airlines groan as aviation fuel exceeds 600 naira per liter. I hope we'll not be hearing of uh, aviation fuel scarcity. That's something we would like to hear. Um, governor's wives storm National Assembly protests rejection of pro-women bills and many injured shops burned as Yoruba Hausa clash in Ogun. Many injured Shops burnt as Yoruba and Hausa clash in Ogun. Osho governorship, Adeleke picks PDP ticket, Babaya Me merges parallel candidate, and Reverend's son drills borehole at Kaduna Mosque. This is all the things we'd like to hear in this country. Um, we'd like to, at this point, welcome our guest, analyst this morning on Off the Press. Uh, Tunde Kolawale is a legal practitioner. Um, Mr. Kolawale, thank you very much for your time. Good morning once again. Thanks for having me. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, your thoughts. Let's start with the daily uh, trust and um, uh, the president is urging proactive action with the news that uh, bandits ambushed and killed 60, 63 vigilante uh, group members in, um, in KB State. Uh, there's also a writer to that headline indicating that uh, there was a leaked plan Someone was an informant to leak the plan to these uh, bandits. We still have to grapple with the problem of banditry, which seems to be becoming larger than Boko Haram terrorism. Your thoughts on this, Mr. Kolawale? Well, uh, honestly speaking, when I read that story, I started wondering what kind of proactive measure Mr. President is talking about that he now wants to take a few months uh, before leaving office. For God's sake, we have been in this problem for more than 10 years. And if we were alive to our responsibilities, if we had a wherewithal to take any proactive measure, we ought to have done it in the last 10 years. And we have been bundling with the Boko Haram insurgency and this uh, rural banditry in the northern part of the country. And of course, urban banditry in the southern part of the country. I think Mr. President is merely trying to assuage uh, the feelings of the people. He is speaking diplomatically, or what I would call just a mere political uh, statement. It is well nigh beyond him now. If there is going to be redemption, if you are going to be able to curtail and bring an end to this banditry, whether rural banditry or urban banditry, or the Boko Haram insurgency, we should be looking beyond the Muhammad Buhari administration. All right, um, uh, let's just move away from that now and look at the leadership newspaper where um, the caption says that the senators rejected the ruling of the Federal High Court in Abuja, stopping it from amending the 2022 Electoral Act as requested by the president. And the concern that we're looking at section 82 and uh, subsection 12 as well, talking about disenfranchisement of political office holders. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, I, I think the Senate is right in the position they are taking. You and I will know that there is a separation of power 
you have the executive, you have the legislator, and then you have the judiciary. The legislator cannot dictate to the judiciary and to interpret the law. The legislator cannot interfere in the way the executive does its uh, work on a day-to-day -day basis. The executive is also not expected to interfere in the work of the legislator and that of the judiciary. So when the judiciary goes ahead to now tie the hands of uh, the legislator in terms of making law, it will not be in tandem with the provisions of the constitution. In fact, I would have to say that it is that pronouncement of the court is in violent conflict with the provisions of the constitution that says there shall be a separation of power and that the legislator will have unfettered right and unfettered power to make laws for the good governance of the country. Our judgments are there to be in bad taste. And I think the Senate, the National Assembly in general, will be in good stead to just ignore that pronouncement. Even though you and I do know that uh, we as lawyers, we as citizens, are not expected to encourage people to disobey court orders or to engage in self help But when the court overreaches itself, this is the kind of uh, equilibrium that it brings onto itself. The court that made this pronouncement has overreached itself. It's like saying uh, the police should not, for example, uh, conduct investigation. I mean, when they feel that a crime or has been committed and in fact has been committed. Our courts, all courts in Nigeria hardly will give such an order, such a ruling, uh, incapacitating any arm of government from delivering or from doing its uh, uh, work. It is when that arm of government has overreached itself, or has violated the constitution, or has done what it is not empowered to do, either by the constitution or the laws of the land, then the judiciary can step in. I think my lord has good with respect to that uh, decision. Okay, but let's also look at the content of it. Is it all right to have, you know, political office holders uh, still holding to their offices? Why, you know, the vie for political office and what have you? Well, the law is an ash. It may not be favorable to certain persons. Because the... It may but, not even... I beg, because um, the request that's been made from the president is that that should be expunged. Uh, the National Assembly should, you know, take that part away entirely. I agree with the I agree with the presidency that uh, that section of the law should be amended or should be imposed. We already have uh, in the constitution a provision that says that political office holder who seek to contest election and participate in uh, some of these uh, delegate uh, uh, party activities and all that should resign. Three months before the the, the, the the take part in such activities, I will consider, I will think very strongly that that is enough uh, uh, provision to really take care of whatever the anxiety, whatever misgivings, whatever disagreements, uh, or whatever inhibitions at the National Assembly or the Senate we have with that provision. But to say that uh, a political appointee cannot participate in party activities such as conventions and war review, in my humble opinion, nobody gets it wrong. Nobody gets elected or nobody gets appointed, either as ambassador or secretary to government or as uh, uh, board chairman, directors and parastatals and other. Without being card carry members for most of these political parties, it's only a few uh, technocrats on their own merit or on their own pivot that get into some of these uh, places because of the special skills that they possess. But generally speaking, most political appointees are card carry members of the different political parties that we have in the country. So when the legislator goes ahead to emasculate or tie the hands of a fellow politician or fellow uh, people, I mean of their own uh, colleagues, who only merely to be participating or serving in the executive arm of government, eh, doesn't speak well at all. It's a very, very selfish provision that should be struck down. Just like the provisions that say that eh, all uh, parties should organize direct primaries to 
to make their perspective a flag bearer. These are things that will leave, these are decisions that will lead to the different political parties to, 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 to take. Furthermore, there are constitutions. All the political parties have constitutions, which guide the ways and manner they carry out their activities on a daily basis. So I, I agree with uh, the Mr. President that that provision should be expunged. And if the Senate also want to, I mean, want to amend that area of the constitution, I should think we should give them more the support that they desire. The vision of the court, I say once again, is uh, overreaching itself. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kola Wale Tunde. Uh, um, let, let's move on to the big one on the front page of uh, Pau Chinese paper this morning. Uh, of course, the, um, the queues, the fuel queues at the petrol stations are still there. They seem to be uh, a, a, a lesser or shorter. You know, it takes a bit uh, less time than last week where we last had you on this program. Uh, but the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is warning of hyper inflation they're warning of hyper inflation um of course they're saying this with this headline crude oil price man warns of hyper inflation subsidy hits 400 naira uh diesel 200 or 625 naira what are your thoughts on this with also vision fuel hitting 580 naira at a time when the crude oil price on the international uh, market is going up and nigeria should be earning more uh, we're seeing that <laughs> things are not the same way uh, they, or the way they should be. Uh, I saw a report on, on business day this morning while driving to work that says that Nigeria will spend even more if credit is not taking more than its earnings from crude oil sales this year on subsidy payments. Sir? When it uh, boils down to the old argument, you and I will remember that during the Gulf War, the prices of uh, crude uh, petroleum products went up astronomically. And Nigeria started making a windfall of that. We earned um, a lot of um, unexpected uh, 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 money uh, during that uh, Gulf War. But the opposite seems to be what we are having to do, simply because uh, most of the places that we buy the petroleum products that we have since today, which is Europe and America and all that, uh, one way or the other, directly affected uh, by this war that is going on in uh, in uh, Ukraine and um, uh, between uh, Ukraine and then uh, the Russia. Russia. Why is this so? You will remember that most of Europe depend on um, not less than forty percent of their gas consumption and also petroleum products uh, coming from uh, Russia, and they have all slammed all manners of uh, uh, um, Sanctions. punishment, so to say, hmm. uh, on uh, Russia, a uh, ban importation of one thing or other from Russia, and Russia has also retaliated. I suspect this is going to affect the cost of process, I mean, the cost of production, the cost of refining of a uh, you know, crude product in most of these European countries and America. Furthermore. The petroleum product that most of these countries get from Russia, they might not be getting it anymore. They probably will be looking at the Middle East, Africa, and some of these other places, uh, which is likely to lead to a kind of increase in the cost of uh, purchasing uh, uh, these materials, I mean, these uh, products. More importantly, you and I do know that we don't have any control whatsoever beyond the raw crude that we sell outside the country. Even that raw crude, the price is determined by the international market, by OPEC. So the refined product in the same, we don't have control over the prices of uh, the refined product, simply because none of our refineries uh, is working as are present. The only time we will begin to have control over some of these things is when the refineries in the country begin to work and we can produce enough uh, refined products to really feed the domestic uh, market. But seriously speaking, it doesn't appear to me that we are looking in that direction. We have had 20 years of this democracy, and I would think that 20 years is enough time for us to be able to do whatever turnaround maintenance that we want to do, and even build new refineries. After all, we have seen an individual in Dangote who is building a refinery, and there is almost at a completion. You also remember 
that um, I think it was under the Russian government for John era, and then Dr. Gulot to let too. That individual was given licenses to build the refineries and all that. How many of those refineries have been built? Those people merely collected the paper with the intention to sell them for working profits uh, outside the country or within the country, and then move on without establishing any refinery. Whatever challenges we are facing today is our own creation. These are problems that are not beyond us as our people. As regards the warning by the manufacturers Association, and we're going to be hiding hyperinflation. The hyperinflation is already there. You go to the market and see what is happening. What is the price of uh, a bag of rice today? What is the price of uh, uh, um, a bag of beans? How much do you buy a basket of uh, onion? Look at the prices of uh, paper, for paper products. They have all uh, skyrocketed, it, not uh, a double or triple in most of these places. And so, for God's sake, when you have a country of 200, and 200 million people, you should do more of your own production internally and not depend on importation or wholesale importation of everything that you need. Because when you do so, then you might be paying at, um, at the international uh, 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 prices, which is denominated in uh, uh, pound sterling and then in dollar. And these dollars and pound sterling, we are no longer getting as much as we used to get. Because mm. to no longer sell it. Yes, yes. So, so uh, what benefit would it be now that you know OPEC has actually increased uh, the quota production for Nigeria, 1.72 million barrels for March, uh, from 1.70 million barrels in February, and 1.68, despite the fact that we have been missing the target? Well, my suspicion is that um, the impact is going to be marginal. Because the problem at hand, the magnitude of the problem that we have on ground in the country today is such that, except you are able to sell more crude oil than OPEC has given us as allocation, except we are able to refine some of these products locally uh, to satisfy the local demand or the local market and all that. So well, this marginal increase is like a drop in the ocean because millions of cars on the road, we also depend on this energy. To, to, for, for, for our power supply. Most of the power, I mean, most of the power plants, we are told, the water level has become so low and they cannot generate energy or power at the capacity they used to be able to generate. You and I will also know that the gas fired plants are also in trouble because of the war between Russia and Ukraine. The prices of gas have gone up internationally and most of these power plants in the country might not be able to afford to buy the quantity that they used to buy before the war uh, started. So we are in the catch 22. The issue is uh, where between the devil and the deep blue sea, the Nigerian politicians, the Nigerian allies, require to put on their thinking cap and abandon their selfish interests to fix the refinery. Don't start using the refinery as a condo type to siphon money abroad. Like I said last week, an engineer told me that you don't need more than three to six months to be able to do the turnaround maintenance of, what, of any of the uh, plants, uh, any of the petroleum plants that we have uh, in the country. But we are not eager to do this. The, the contract that uh, General Muhammad Buhari just awarded, he said that the turnaround maintenance of the refinery that they want to maintain will take six years. So, and then, where will the country be? The population is rising on a daily basis, more cars on the road, more um, uh, generators uh, in different homes. You also have all manners of washing machines and all manners of gadgets that we have to power using some of these sources of energy. Besides, like I keep saying it, petroleum products is an obsolete energy. Very soon, another 10, 20 years, it will be like coal that nobody wants to do anything with. People are looking in the direction of uh, solar energy, People are looking at the atomic energy. People are even exploring hydro-energy. And okay. so many other different energies that are being we, invented. We, we have to go. The researchers are working on all over the world. Yes, yes. You know? To the so, color, it, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, interesting and uh, very worrying times.
uh, for the Nigerian economy. Someone's commenting that uh, Mr. President is not around uh, when these things are going on. And another person replied to him by saying, even when he's around, it's like he's not around. So leave him to not be around. I wish you had more time with you, but thank you so much uh, for your expert analysis on uh, the headlines yes. today. Can I permit me to say my condolence yeah. to the families of Amishé? A lady was killed in uh, a BRT bus. A Lagos state government has failed that lady woefully. We as uh, Lagosians have failed that lady woefully. I pray that uh, justice will be done in our case. The implication of what has happened to that lady is that uh, the authorities in Lagos don't do due diligence before they hire some of these people who are driving some of these buses or working with some of these uh, transport organizations. If due diligence has been done on some of these uh, thoughts, I am sure what happened to them will never have happened. All right, Tundekolo, we have to go. Uh, but, but thank you very much for your time. We wish you had more time because that's uh, one of the headlines we would have Thanks loved to look at. Me. But time is done on our side. Well, we appreciate you for your time. Uh, Tundekolo is a legal practitioner and he's a guest analyst of Off the Press right here on Plus TV Africa. Well, let's uh, take a break now. And just before then, we'll let you know what happened today in history. When we return, we'll be heading straight to our first major conversation where we look at the, the judgment of the Federal High Court in Abuja sacking the governor, deputy governor of Ebony State. Please stay with us.